Today we're meditating to dedicate the merit of the meditation to Rama the Ninth, the late king of Thailand. Today is his birthday. He would have been 94 years old. We think of the goodness he's done for Thailand, the goodness he's done for Buddhism, and we'd like to show our gratitude. We can't send presents to him because the post office doesn't have an office where he is. But we can send the current of the mind. The Johns in Thailand talk a lot about this, that the mind has its currents. And they use the current. The word current has two meanings in Thailand. One is a, the current of a river. There's a flow that flows out of the mind, just like the current of a river. But they also use the word for current for, to describe radio, radio waves that are broadcast. And so you want to ask yourself, what kind of energy are you broadcasting? And the best energy comes from a mind that's one. Otherwise, the signal is all, all garbled. Sometimes the waves cancel each other out. Sometimes they augment each other too much. But if the mind is one, the waves are in unison, and they can provide a good message. So think about what kind of current you're creating, trying to make the mind as one as you can. And that's the first step in, in any kind of meditation, is looking at your mind and putting it in good shape. Sometimes you can sit down and just focus on the breath, and there you are, no problem. Other times the mind needs a little work. Either has too much energy or too little energy to settle down with the breath. If it has too much energy, try to think in ways that are calming. Give rise to a sense of well-being in the present moment. And the Buddha recommends that you think about your past generosity, you think about your past virtue. We can think about the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha as inspiring examples for what you want to do. In terms of your generosity, especially think about times when there was something you wanted to use, but you realized that someone else could make good use of it, would be happy to have it, and you were able to overcome your stinginess and you gave it. Not because you had to, but because you saw it was the right thing to do. Same with your virtue. Try to think especially of times when you could have broken the precepts, there might have been a reward. You could have gotten away with it. But something inside you said no. Other people might not know that you'd broken the precept, but you would have known. And you had a sense of honor that you didn't want to do that. When you think about these things, it gives rise to a sense of uplifting energy in the mind. It's calming to the mind. It's a kind of happiness that feels really, really good, unlike the happiness of sensual pleasures, which feels good for a while and then t turns into something else. But the knowledge of your past goodness, that sticks with you for a long time, and it's good for a long time. On the other hand, if you have too much energy in the mind, you can you think about death. Death could come at any time. When we're born, we fall in line and it's not the case that we always go out to the end of the line. Sometimes younger people go first, older people go later. Where you are in line, you don't know it. You could be very close, and there's very little advance warning. Are you ready to go? And you stop and realize, well, no, I'm not. I've got to stir up some energy to work on the mind, so I will be in good shape in case I have to go. I think in these terms, it gets the mind into balance. When you realize it's ready to focus on the breath, then you direct your thoughts to the breath, and then you start evaluating it. Start out with some good, long, deep in and out breaths. If long breathing feels good, keep it up. But then you can ask yourself, what, what kind of other breathing would feel better? You can try shorter breathing, or in, long, out, short, in, short, out, long. Faster, slower, heavier, lighter, weaker, stronger. And you find a rhythm and texture of breathing that feels really good. Then you stick with that as long as it feels good. And 
and try to stay in the present moment as much as you can. You bring, th bring three qualities to this mindfulness, keeping things in mind. In other words, remembering why you're here, remembering to stay with the breath. At the same time, remembering how to recognize skillful meta qualities when they come up and unskillful ones when they come up, and remember what to do. So even though you're in the present moment, you do make some reference to the past, just enough reference to be useful. The same with the future. Instead of sitting here thinking about how much you really like to get an awakening, or how much anything in the future you would like, you realize the best way to prepare for the future is always to be here in the present moment, developing mindfulness and alertness. Especially if you start thinking about work you have to do. You say, well, the responsible thing is to start thinking about the work. You have to remember, your, your mind is like a tool. And if you use the tool and without taking care of it, after all, the tool becomes useless. It's like a carpenter's tools. If the carpenter doesn't keep their saw sharp and his chisel sharp, then after all, they become useless. So even though it takes time to sharpen these things, you have to stop your work for a while and sharpen them. It's the same with the mind. The mind needs to be sharpened, because it gets really dull very easily. So you remind yourself, any worries about the future, the best way of preparing for the future is to come back in the present. So learn how to apply the past to the present moment in a skillful way, and apply thoughts of the future in a skillful way to add to your motivation to stay right here, right now. As for thinking about the past, sometimes you think about times when the meditation went really well. You start wondering, why is today's meditation not so good? Well, think about the past only to the extent that you can ask yourself, well, what did I do to make it go well? And if you can't remember, let it go. If you can't remember, give it a try. See if it works this time around. If it doesn't work well, it's the time to pay more attention to the present moment, because the present moment is where all this is happening. This is where you're developing your skills, because you want to be able to see your mind in motion, see your mind in action. They now have what they call spirit, spiritual technology, where they can manipulate the brain waves or give you biofeedback so you can manipulate your own brain waves a little bit to get you into concentration. But they can't guarantee any kind of insight, because insight comes watching your mind in the present moment, seeing where you have choices and seeing where the choices make a difference. And that's something only you can do for yourself. As for meditations that were really good in the past, you can't watch them anymore. So just keep telling yourself, what's happening right now is better than what happened in the past. Because at least you have the opportunity to see. Years back when I was at Wadamasa, we'd have these driving salesmen come driving past the monastery, sometimes in the afternoon. There was a guy who sold water jars. And his spiel was pretty simple, just water jars, water jars. There was a guy who sold salt. Again, his was pretty simple too, just salt, salt. There was the one who sold Chinese dumplings. He had the most elaborate spiel. You could hear his truck coming over the rise. He had a little loudspeaker on the top, and he seemed to be a little bit drunk. And every day he'd call out with his selling his Chinese dumplings, and he'd always say, today's dumplings are better than yesterday's. And then the next day, Today's dumplings are better than yesterday's, day after day, kept on getting better and better. And you wondered when he was going to reach the platonic ideal of Chinese dumpling. But then someone pointed out to me, well, where are yesterday's dumplings right now? If they're not in your intestines, they're down in the, down in the cesspool. So whatever dumplings you have today, they're better than yesterday's. So it's the same with your meditation. No matter how good it may have been in the past, what's good about it now is the lessons you may have drawn. And if you didn't draw any lessons, then just forget about it. Focus on what you're doing right now, because it's the state of mind in the present moment that really matters.
So work with the breath to get it comfortable. If there are pains in the body, you don't have to pay any attention to them. Focus to begin with on the areas of the body that you can make comfortable. When you feel that you can stay there solidly and the breath energy feels good, then you can think of that good breath energy going through the pains to loosen up any tension you may have developed around them. And then when you're feeling really secure, you can actually investigate the pain. See, what is it that takes a physical pain and turns it into a mental pain? In other words, something that you find trouble sitting with and something you say you can't stand. What's the bridge? Did John say that the bridge is perception, the mental labels and images you have for things? So you look into that. What's your image around, around the pain? Why does it feel like it's so invasive? Is the pain actually there in the knee, is it, if it's in the knee? Is it the same thing as the knee? Well, actually, they're different things. The knee is made out of the four elements. The pain is not any of the four elements. Pain is something else. And then there's your awareness. That's something else, too. It knows the pain. It knows the body. The body doesn't know itself. The pain doesn't know itself. It doesn't have any meaning to itself. We're the ones that give it meaning. Ask yourself what meaning does it have for you. You start looking into the perceptions you have around the pain, you begin to realize you've taken these things, you've glommed them together, when they really are separate. And when you can perceive them as separate, then it's a lot easier to live with, live with the pain and not make it a pain in the heart or a pain in the mind. This way you learn how to maximize the pleasure that the elements in the body can provide, and particularly the breath. And you learn not to be pained by the pain. That provides a really good foundation for the mind to be here in the present moment with a sense of well-being. And that's the kind of mind that creates a good current, the kind of current that you would be proud to send to somebody, especially somebody like the king who had done so much good. something he'd be happy to express his appreciation for. And this is one of the ways in which meditation is good all around. All too often people say, you're meditating, you're just looking out after yourself, you don't care about other people. But you're realizing the mind is like an electricity generator. It generates a lot of electricity, a lot of power. With all these untrained minds going around, generating all sorts of weird currents. It's good to have somebody who's generating a good, steady current a calming current, a nourishing current of the, of the mind, getting that energy into the world. So put your mind in a state where you'd be proud to present it to the king. And you find that it's a gift not only for the king, but also for you and for everybody around. As I said in the morning, when we when we meditate like this, when we practice the Buddhist teachings, we're trying to make sure that goodness doesn't disappear from the world. We can't be responsible for what other people do, what kind of goodness they try to maintain. But just make sure you don't ignore the, the goodness that you can develop, the goodness that you can give. Because that's a gift that benefits everyone.